Okay, folks, so I just want to pop in at the beginning of this video. Sorry, I live right on the street. Um, I want to pop in at the beginning of the video and just make a statement that I am not saying that this is a traditional way to cook these tacos or to even make the tortillas. Um, in Mexico, just like here in the United States, in different regions, I'm sure that foods are cooked different ways. Um, one of the reasons that I cook the way I do is my husband Julian and I raised five children and we were often on a very tight grocery budget. So um, a lot of the times we improvised or we, we didn't use the best cuts of meat, but we used what we had and we learned to make it flavorful and good for us and the kids. So um, I'm going to share that here. This is something that Julian and I would cook very often. It's just a basic, um, we called it carne asada, but it, you know, it's just um, red meat um, of some sort other than ground. We're not making Taco Bell tacos here. We're making um, Mexican style tacos. Um, so some kind of cut of beef and then um, the tortillas are obviously the way Julian showed me to make them was very very simple It only takes three ingredients. That's my seca, salt and water. So I hope you enjoy the video and um, come back for more All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is turn my skillet on about medium-high and put uh, about I guess a tablespoon and a half maybe of oil might be a little more than that um, this is the meat I'm going to be using I'm just going to be showing y'all that so you know what's what's the dealio that is meat that you can get at Walmart it's called carne picado and uh, that's what I use so I've got a couple of fat cloves of garlic here that I have chopped up really fine and some onion that I just kind of diced up really it's chopped up really messy but you know it's just a flavor and so it's on really high heat here like medium high and I want it there um that's just always the way Julian taught me to do it and with food like this um the Mexican food that I learned to cook a lot of what Julian his sister and his cousins taught me was that smells and the look of the food is um, a, an easy indication of whether you're cooking it right or it's done or so those ar aromatic smells are just oh I, I cannot describe the onions and the garlic together smell so good so I'm not caramelizing those and um, one reason is because I'm really bad at caramelizing things I don't caramelize I burn um, just showing you the seasonings here. That's all I'm going to use in the meat once I've got it in there. So I want to just cook these um, onions and garlic down a little bit. want them to get a little bit of a brown translucent in the onions. And then I'm going to add the meat. And we do not turn the heat down because the whole idea with this is to get that that meat a good sear on it. I guess that's what you're looking for. Julian used to say, you want to burn it a little bit, woman. So... <laughs> I'm just going to burn it a little bit. I'm going to add the seasonings, the Lowry's seasoning salt and regular table salt is all I'm using. And you just do that to taste. I try not to make my food too salty because I, you know, I am getting older and I do have um, issues with my blood pressure. So, yeah. So we're going to cook that and just keep it on that high heat and keep a watch on it. This is not something that you would cover and leave and come back to because you're not going to get the right kind of <clears throat> meat consistency. So I've cooked mine. I think it cooked for about 15 to 20 minutes. And you can see that there's a little bit of sear on those pieces of meat. And it just smells incredible. I mean, just, woo. I love that smell. You know how when you go to a really good restaurant and you can smell the food and it's sizzling when it comes out? That's what I wanted. So I am using, unfortunately, when I started this, I didn't realize I didn't have any maseca. The only maseca that I had was the yellow. And I do not, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I'll just say that. You add salt to taste. And this is Julian's recipe for tortillas. I didn't make this up. I didn't, this is how he made them. He, very simple cooking he didn't have to add a lot of things so 
yeah so I'm what I'm doing is I'm gonna mix that with my hands and like Julian taught me you do it until it doesn't stick to your hands anymore and then you've got the right consistency you don't want it too dry you don't want it too wet but you just want it to not stick to your hands anymore so there's my bowl of masica or masa and I'm, I've got my little tortilla smasher out, and I'm just going to smash up a few of these and put them on this griddle, which I have on the highest heat setting, which I think is about 400. And so what you want to do is let them cook a couple of minutes on one side, then flip them, and then flip them again. And you, they're ideally, you want them to rise. You want to see them to, not rise, but kind of get full of air. And I'm really bad at that, but I was so proud of these because they they started poofing up. And I was like, yeah, I did it. So, yeah, you kind of want them to poof up. And I think that that just makes sure that everything gets cooked in there and they're nice and light and airy and not too, you know, dense when they get done. I've got my meat here and I've got some green salsa which I did not make I didn't have the ingredients to make homemade salsa I do really like to do that too and if you would like I'll show you that in a later video um, so I've got my cilantro and my onions and my limes and I am good to go I'm gonna make me up some tacos and enjoy this nice weird North Carolina weather the end of December and it was warm enough for me to sit outside and eat without even so much as a sweater on so yeah um, one thing about these tacos that I think I, I tried to emphasize in the intro of the video is that I'm not trying to say this is how you make them this is how I make them um, I I raised five children and we were always on a tight budget but one thing about my husband was he worked very hard and he liked to eat good so um, he taught me a lot of these recipes that I know and um, you know there, we always worked our way around it if we couldn't afford the best cuts of meat you know if you've never had filet mignon you don't miss filet mignon so I, I have always learned to adapt and cook with what I had and my children enjoyed my food because I don't have a skinny one in the bunch <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's it. I hope y'all enjoyed this little video. And this is an homage to my late husband, Julian, who taught me how to cook Mexican food. And he was from Veracruz, Mexico, and he was an awesome cook. So hope y'all enjoyed this. Come back for more. Peace, y'all. Bye-bye. Y'all, I just wanted to point out that I have a tip jar set up now through PayPal where you can donate any amount to help me raise money to get a new sewing machine and some much-needed video equipment. You can also look in the description box below and there will be um, a link to my tip jar and also a link to or my cash app code. Um, so anything and everything is much needed and appreciated. 